Well, fair warning, we're here to do a little bit of shilling. And I'm shilling for myself. A couple weeks ago, I asked, hey, would anybody be interested if I made up some PCBs for those leak detectors? And a few people said yes, so I figured, what the heck, let's go ahead and do it. And so, there it is. And your first question is probably going to be, why the heck is that thing so dang big? Uh, believe it or not, I would have made it smaller, but if I'd have made it smaller, they would have charged me more to make it. Turns out that 10 by 15 millimeters is as small as they will make something without it costing more. So the PCB ended up being about the same size as a micro SD card, so hopefully that won't be too big to integrate into your projects. Now, if you're not familiar with this circuit, I will put a link down below to the previous video that I did make explaining the schematic and how this thing works. In this video, I'll just talk about the actual PCB I made and how you might buy one should you be interested. Now, one thing I did spend the extra money on are the castellated edges here on the side. And to explain why I have those, let's go ahead and get into the pinout of this thing. On this side, we've just got the sense pins. And the pins are just standard pin header spacing, so you can use pin headers or you can use any other wires that you want for your sensor leads. On the other side, I've got ground voltage input, so this will run on 3.3 volts, and then the sense output pin itself. They are also labeled on the back, so should you get confused about what's going on, there you'll have an indicator. So the reason why I made this with castellated edges is so that you can put that thing right on a C gel without needing any extra wires headers or connectors, it will line up exactly with the ground, the 3.3 voltage, and the first digital pin on this side. That pin is D10 if you're using the C3 version of the CJAO ESP32. And in addition to that, I've whipped up a little 3D printed enclosure. I will put up the STL and the step files so that you can modify this if you need to. And so this thing's made so that if you do use it with a seed gel and you do use the castellated edges to join these together, it will fit right in here and I've got holes on the bottom that will exactly line up with the little sensor pin outputs. And then, if you take a standard pin header and you put it upside down through there, you can then trim off those extra pins. And then on the bottom side, those two pins will just barely be sticking out the bottom and you'll be good to go. Now, the reason it is a little big is so that on the inside, you've got just enough room to where you can mount the antenna from the CJAL on top of the case. So, like I said, I'll put this out there for anybody to download that wants it. Now, with this setup, this pin that I had to use in order to keep the board from being unnecessarily bigger isn't the best configuration to use on battery. And the reason is, is that there's a better method to use this sensor on battery. One of the things I found whenever I was really digging through this and the way it worked is that whenever this thing isn't actually sensing a leak, it doesn't draw any current, which means this is an excellent opportunity to use this to wake up a device in deep sleep, such as a ESP32, for leak detection, meaning whenever it detects a leak, it can wake the device up and while the device is asleep, this won't really draw any power. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so we've got a little test set up just to demonstrate the power consumption on this sensor. And what I've got is an ESP32 being powered by USB. You could be powered off of battery. It wouldn't really make any difference for this particular example. I've got it wired in. Here's the leak detector sensor. And in between the ground of the sensor and the board, I've got my fluke meter set up to read in microamps. So currently it is reading 0.01 microamps and the device is currently asleep. So I'll show you what happens whenever you get a leak. If I touch these contacts, you'll see it starts conducting and it pulls up to about 100 microamps. Again, that's microamps, not milliamps. It's a very, very small amount of current. I've seen as high as about 120, but not much more than that. And once that happens, pull this up at the bottom, it says leak detected and it woke this device up. Now, once the leak goes away, there you go. We have now gone back to sleep. So it's an extremely power efficient method for leak detection because your device can stay in deep sleep 
the entire time. It never needs to wake up to do anything unless it detects a leak. And so I'll put that YAML configuration in a GitHub for you. That way you can use it as a pattern for your own devices. So by the way, in Home Assistant, when you set these things up, you want to set them up as a moisture sensor and then use the icon MDI water on or MDI water off. And that way it'll actually work as any other leak detector in your dashboard. It'll give you a nice icon indicator. Um, it'll show up in the history with a good status as dry or wet. And it'll work like any other leak detector once you get that all set up. Well, now we get to the crunch time. How much would you pay for leak detecting sensor PCB? And I was going to do a big shtick and maybe do some kind of funny stuff introducing the pricing, but I'll just get to the point. I don't want to waste your time. I will sell you five of these things for 10 bucks plus shipping. And shipping is going to be $5 flat, meaning if you order more than five, it's still five bucks shipping. And they're $5 because I'm not going to gouge you. I'm going to put these things in a rigid mailer. I got to pay postage. I'm going to put them in an anti-static bag. Although I can't show you that right now because Amazon keeps screwing up the delivery. And so I've ordered them twice and they still haven't shown up. But I will have those in hopefully pretty soon. I'm not here to you know make a bunch of money. I'll be surprised if I ever make my money back off of these things. But yeah, five for 10 bucks another five dollars of shipping and if you order more than five again i'm not going to charge any more for shipping if you're international you'll just have to contact me i don't know what shipping will be uh, my rates only valid within the united states i'll put the link down below currently this is on etsy because that seemed to be the best interface possible given the scale that i'm working with if that ever changes i will update the link fyi on etsy you do not have to have an account you can buy these as a guest so you won't have to sign up for any accounts or anything it will handle all the payments so you should be able to pay in a variety of methods of your own choosing so that just seemed to be the easiest way to handle this stuff and that's it that's all I got if you want a really good sensitive leak detector that you can use and is suitable for battery operated ESP home devices or if you just want to incorporate it into an Arduino project or STM32 that they're gonna work with any microcontroller that can output 3.3 volts now look, I'm not here asking you to support the channel. That's not what this is. If you don't need these, don't buy these. But if you do need one, you know, don't be shy. I, I, uh, I, I got a little carried away whenever I ordered these things. And I got a few of them, so feel free to, to place an order if you do have a use for these things. I will be more than glad to sell you some. Anyway, that's it for me. As always, I appreciate your time. If you got any questions, comments, or feedback, as always, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks.